and once upon a time I purchased one of these keypads from Razer and it was their most affordable model. I believe it was called the Razer Orthrus or something along the lines and I barely ever used it. I thought that I would use it a lot more but it just didn't really have enough utility to make me want to use it more frequently. So I'm back to giving these things a try and seeing if I can actually find enough use for it to justify the price. Introducing the Razer Tartarus Pro. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Before we continue, don't forget that I have a Twitch channel that you can go ahead and follow me on for live microphone reviews and much more than that. But you're also going to find my Twitter, my Instagram, and a link to the text on the Discord in the description. So come join the community because it is a pretty cool one. We've also opened up a Patreon as of late where if you join, you'll be automatically entered to win one tech gadget every month in our exclusive giveaways. Details to that are going to be down below. Don't forget to check out the description for everything. Now let's get right into the video. Now let's begin with this wonderful unboxing. It actually comes in this nice box and then once you open it, you will find the keypad right on top and it has a braided cable to go along with it. Underneath the foam, you're going to find your instructions and everything that you need in order to get started. The exterior design is honestly pretty neat. I'm glad that I went with this white color because because the black models make the dust collection more obvious, but it just looks really good and even really classy in the way that it is right now. You've got 19 keys, a scroll wheel, a custom button on the side, a D-pad, and a large button for your thumb, which is currently mapped to the spacebar, so it's mostly for jumping and things of the like, and that's how I intend on leaving it, to be honest. You've also got RGB lighting all across the keypad. On the keys, the scroll wheel, and it's minimal, but it still looks very nice and honestly, like especially with this color. Also, this keypad does appear to have individually lit keys instead of the zone lighting from previous models, so this is a very nice change of pace. And we're even back to mechanical buttons instead of those membrane ones that I had from the Orthrus. Again, if I'm remembering the name of that product correctly. So these are optical keys and don't have satisfying clicking sound that I have grown to love and are certainly quieter than most mechanical keyboards. I really like this design this time around and I do think that Razer that aspect. And moving on to comfort, this is actually going to be a rather niche perspective because I do have tiny hands, but from someone like me, I actually find it very comfortable, but I do end up having to reach for keys from time to time, so it's not really all that optimal for me to try to make use of every button or every key here, really. So I actually end up using the middle to bottom rows of the set, which is a downside for myself, so I do wish that there was the more customization here. There is a way to adjust, so just a wrist pad, but it's only really to make it longer. I don't think it's a great or really like a big deal here. And honestly, I find it to be very comfortable as it is, but it was just worth noting that not every key is that accessible to somebody with hand sizes like mine. And when it comes to customizations, you do get quite a bit going for you, but it is pretty much as expected. Well, actually with a little more spring sprinkled in here. Now you can customize just about every key on this keypad if you wanted to, and you can customize it to whatever you want. You can also mess around with your RGB lighting on every component on this keypad. It's nothing too crazy, but it's pretty much everything that you'll be needing here. You can also customize each key to like keyboard process, you can customize them to joystick movements, launching programs, controller buttons even, and much more than that. There's even a switch for switching between different profiles like if you're playing different games and things like that, you might want to be able to switch between set profiles, which is actually mapped to this rounded button right on the side here, which I mean, it is actually pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and test some software and I actually started off with Doom. It was pretty interesting playing with this keypad. It was comfortable enough, but certainly required more of a learning curve since this is a very fast paced game but I was eventually able to get a grip on it and it ended up being quite a bit of fun. I don't know if I would use this for more competitive challenges because I still find myself forgetting some button placements and I actually end up pressing some other buttons by, by accident or reaching for the wrong keys without even realizing it, but it has mostly been a pretty cool and fun experience overall. 
Has this made me better or more efficient at the game? The answer is totally no, but it could with enough practice as everything that you could theoretically need is really at the palm of your hand and it is going to be up to how you customize it. And when it comes to an MMO like Final Fantasy XIV, I like this. I feel like this was a better experience because in this case, I didn't require split second reactions, but I still needed to be pretty alert of the game, obviously. The palette for abilities that I can reach with the palm of my hand are more limited, but if I map a button on the side to, let's say, control, then I can just leave most of the other buttons set to numbers and then just use that to access my other abilities on the fly. And I actually found this to be the most optimal use case for a product like this and I would totally play more MMOs with it to be honest. And I know that this is meant more so for gaming but this is honestly my favorite use for, for this device and that's going to be for video editing. I liked being able to map each key to shortcuts within DaVinci Resolve as it made me really efficient at, at editing and it was very comfortable to work with this. Everything does feel like it's just perfectly placed to make every button easy enough to reach at least again like from the middle row and below for me and honestly this is a great tool for productivity and i might actually continue to use it just considering how efficient it has made me like editing all of these reviews and editing the podcast episodes and stuff like that it really has been that great of a tool in my opinion so when it comes to complaints i honestly don't have much to say i i I guess that I do wish that the cable was a little bit longer, but that's more of a minor inconvenience. And I suppose that it would be nice if I could directly set macros onto these, but I understand why that may not be the case. And it doesn't really bother me so much anyway. However, and this is more of a preference thing. I do wish that the buttons were, were actually clickier. I do definitely prefer the loud and crisp green switches that Razer has been using for quite some time or that I'm very much used to seeing from them. So I I would like to see a version with those buttons or those keys those switches instead but i really ended up liking this more than i thought i would based off of my own experiences with other keypads from razer and at no moment did these hinder my ability to perform once i got a handle on them and it will be a learning curve for anyone who's new to this kind of stuff however the keys are great the placement of the keys and other buttons is also going to be quite optimal and this is overall just a very comfortable keypad to use which does count for quite a lot it's not cheap at around 130 dollars but if you wanted one to try out then i certainly won't stop you from doing so because it is actually pretty cool and it could be very useful to you it's got advantages with productivity as well as gaming. So yeah, highly recommend it. And if you're interested in purchasing this product, then I'll be making sure to leave affiliate links down to Amazon in the, in the description. And if you end up using any of my links, such as any of my links to Luster, which is actually going to be a really great tool for helping you find sales online, which is super useful. If you want to be able to find sales more easily, and also there's going to be a Bunda. If you've already decided that you want to go with this keypad, a Bunda is going to be a very simple to use service that's just going to let you finance everything that you want off of Amazon, no credit card of your own needed. So links to that down below. If you end up using any of my links, I'll be getting a small commission that does help out the channel quite a bit. So I'd appreciate that quite a bit. And also there's going to be the Tech Summit Patreon, which I do encourage you to go and subscribe to because we do hold a bonus episode to the Tech Summit podcast. And we also hold monthly giveaways for a tech gadget that we have reviewed on this channel of 50 bucks and higher in value. So do make sure to stop by for that. Links to that down below. You can also also find me on twitch and you can also find me on twitter and instagram all of my social media is just going to be down in the description so with that said this has been francisco from tech summit thank you for watching and i will be seeing you all later enjoy